Ladies and gentlemen, let's try gaming to the com video. We're going to be going through the daily tech news, as you'd probably come to expect from me about this point. And if not, well, then you must be a new subscriber. So, with that said, let's get into this, shall we? Because there's been a, quite a few interesting developments specifically related to the CPU side of things, although a couple of movements in the GPU division as well. Before I continue, I do want to also point out that if you check the video description, there is an article related to the TikTok strategy of Intel, and also some leaked images of Nintendo NX's controller have appeared on the internet. So we're not going to be doing a video of this one because of... Nintendo's rather draconian enforcement of copyright on YouTube, so instead we're just going to be doing it as an article. I'd love to do a video on it and give my full thoughts and opinions, but I can't, so check out the article if you want to. Anyway, with that said, let's get into this. So first things first, Summit Ridge and Cable Lake has been spotted on Ada64 Changelog, which is a good thing. Just for those of you who are unfamiliar, with the whole situation. Summit Ridge is the processor specifically related to Zen that was mentioned. Summit Ridge is the 8-core variant of Zen. It's essentially for the desktop and as we all know they are fully fledged SMT cores. This basically means that you can have hyper threading therefore the processor can handle a rather impressive to be totally honest with you 16 threads two times eight don't you know complicated maths come to red gaming tech there's also and i quote improved support for intel's kb lake which of course is the successor to um well skylake we'll get more into intel side of things in just a moment so is this a good thing well definitely this means that developers of testing tools in this case of course um once again ada are starting to receive very early, very, I guess you could say, in progress engineering samples. This means that the processor is on track. It does not mean that we have a release date confirmed, but previously both Intel and uh, AMD have mentioned that their processors are on track for a Q, uh, Q4 2016 launch, and they should be basically clashing. Which one's going to be faster? Who the hell knows? That's what I say. But suffice to say, it's going to be very, very interesting. On the subject of Intel, there has been one thing synonymous with the company for around 10-ish years now, and that is tick and tock. For those uninitiated with the practice, a tick is basically the shrinking of a process. For example, Back in the day, we went from 65nm down to 45nm, or from 32 down to 22, and so on and so on. It basically is the progression of shrinking down the silicon to pack in more transistors, and therefore it means that we can get more complicated architectures. Speaking of which, that would be the TOC. It's the release of a new architecture. For example, um, the original TIC was when Intel shrunk down the process for the earlier versions of the Pentium 4. The TOC was when Intel then released the core variants of the processors. This is way back in the mid-2000s, for those of you, of you who aren't familiar. However, Moore's Law has been a bit of a bitch recently, and the TikTok strategy has become more of a tick tock tock In other words, there's been kind of like a tick shrink right so the process has gotten shrunk if that makes sense from 22 to 14 in this case then we saw an iteration of that um, with a new pro with a new processor and then we had kind of a, a semi talk nothing dirty it basically just means that it was I guess you could say an improvement of the architecture it wasn't a new architecture it wasn't like once again the release of the core processors instead it was I wouldn't say a half measure because that would be an insult but it was a refinement of what they'd already built well Intel now know that this is going to be a thing for the future and now they have released a new flow of uh, work and this is going to be called the PAO, also known as Process, Architecture, and Optimization. 
You might have heard about three words there, and you might think to yourself, well, gee, that sounds awfully like what I just described, but just officialized, and yeah, pretty much. Intel have confirmed the end of their TikTok strategy in a Form 10K report to the SEC, and now will be adopting a three-year Candace, which once again is process, architecture, and optimization. I don't really think I need to explain what that is, and it really is going to be very much what Intel have been dealing with for some time now. It's going to be just one of those unfortunate facts of life. For example, process was the arrival of Broadwell, Or architecture was the arrival of Skylake, and now, remember how I said I was going to get back to KB Lake? Well, in this case, it's optimized. It basically means we're going to see an optimization of what Skylake built, and they're going to do add, going to add little shiny things like, for example, native uh, USB 3.1 rather than needing to rely on uh, a separate bridge uh, chip. It basically just means an improvement of what was there, and they're going to add in some decoder stuff. I believe it was like VP910 or something like that, if memory serves, and some other bits and bobs. What does this mean for us as customers? Because I'm pretty sure you've heard a whole bunch of crap now and you're just thinking, well, yeah, that's nice, but what does it mean for me? Well, you're, you're just me, me, me centric, aren't you? If you want to know, it's actually kind of just weird because it means we're hitting the end of the Silicon Road. Up until now, we've had predictability with Silicon. It's been our friend, it's been our buddy, it's been our war hero. Now it's kind of like, well, yeah. By about 2020, we're going to hit the 5NM, which in this case means that Silicon probably about outlives its usefulness. We're going to have to ditch it in front for a newer, shinier model. Now, we're not quite sure what that newer, shinier model is yet. There are a couple of contenders, and unfortunately, how and what those contenders are going to be remains a bit of a mystery. It's just a symptom of what we've come to, and Intel, for example, are exploring such technologies as Spintronics, which sounds kind of funky, but unfortunately the mystery right now is on hold. We, well, we don't, rather, it, the future is a bit of a mystery of what it holds. That makes much sense, rather than the future is on hold. That sounded a bit ominous, didn't it? What does it all mean? What's going to be faster? Skylake? Is it going to be faster? Then Zen? Is it going to be faster than KB Lake? Unfortunately, we just don't know. The one disappointing factor, at least to me, with uh, KB Lake is that it's going to essentially be an iteration of Skylake, which means it's going to have the equivalent of 6700K, which means four cores and hyper threading, which kind of disappoints but I guess you might have a situation and I'm just pulling out my butt that in some applications KB wins in some applications uh, Zen wins and it will probably depend on the amount of CPUs or rather the amount of threads that that application can utilize and finally now this is probably going to be slightly less of interest to most of you in that the pricing is just insane and the usage of this card is not something that most of us are going to care about. However, if you like the idea of a GPU with 24, I'll say that again, 24 gigabytes of VRAM, NVIDIA have you covered with the Quadro M6000. This essentially is a replacement with the original variant, but still costs the same amount of cash. How much are you going to be paying for it? That's what I hear you scream. A thousand dollars? Two thousand dollars? Three thousand? No! A little more than that. The the super spiffy card costs five thousand US dollars. It is, however, a full GM200 core and, of course, features 36-bit color support, which is pretty darn impressive. This means that you're going to have all 24 SS SMMs, excuse me, enabled. 3072 CUDA uh, cores, that equals to. And the core clocks are maintained at 988 at the default frequency. 
Now, the primary purpose of this card is FP 32 bit. It packs about seven T flops of it, which is an awful lot. And it means that companies, for example, like Sony are going to utilize this. It means that they're going to be able to render and display scenes when they're, let's say, animating a movie. It is a card that's not meant for end users at the end of the day. It is meant for folks who have, or rather need, a super duper amount of performance. Now, just to reiterate one more time, that means that if you are looking to buy the card on the small left chance, you just have to be a little careful because the Quadro is still named the M6000. And so you just need to make sure that you are buying the um, the larger variant of VRAM. So you just need to make sure that once again you are buying 24 gigabytes of VRAM rather than 12 because the pricing is the same and you don't want to end up with the wrong GPU. But let's face it, I don't think many people um, are probably going to be buying these suckers uh, consistently. Let's put it that way. Righty dokey, I think that's about me done for today. So, once again, there are those two links in the video description, which once again are the Intel tick and talk, and, well, rather now the fact that Intel are no longer having the tick and the talking, and of course, the NX controller design, which you are welcome to check out. But for now, I'm gonna get my butt out of here. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you do the likey, subscribey thing because it would mean an awful lot. And, well, do the sharey thing as well while you're at it. Why not, eh? Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. As I said, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.